now. Welcome to the Open Education Southern Symposium presentation for leveraging library resources to support campus OER initiatives at SUNY State University of New York. I'm Nicole Simon and I'm joined by Christine Faraday. So a little bit about us. I am Christine Faraday. I'm the Associate Professor um, and the Library Chairperson at SUNY Nassau Community College. I'm also the campus OER coordinator. Um, so I work with faculty, librarians, um, and students to support the discovery, adoption, uh, evaluation, creation, and use of OER. And I am one of the co-chairs of the OER advisory board that we have on campus. Hi, I'm Nicole Simon. I'm from the Engineering Physics Technology Department at Nassau Community College. I am an assessment fellow. I'm also an instructional designer and an ed tech specialist teaching the STEM fields. And I am also the co-chair of our advisory committee for OER. So we wanna start off talking a little bit about our advisory committee. As you can see, our advisory committee is made up of a wide variety of faculty, administrators, and union reps from across campus and IT. We thought this was very important. That way we can get a very good mix of not only disciplines, but different types of faculty. We have library, obviously. We have our distance ed department. We think this is very important because this is the heart of where OER stems from, because we also have administrative support. We also have the coordinators for our advisory committee involved. Our union is very supportive of what's going on, our academic senate, and being able to have the registrar involved, very important so that they know which courses use OER. Also being able to have different faculty from across campus gives us a nice variety of who's involved with OER and the different areas that we can start targeting faculty to get involved in this venture. Just a quick little statistics on our OER usage. As you can see, we have, again, that wide variety of different courses that use OER throughout the campus. And we have 98 courses in the past four years. When we first started, there were seven courses, seven faculty. Now we're up to 98. So we've been able to scale very quickly. And you can see that we also have a lot of sustainability with the faculty using OER. So not only are they starting to use it once, once they start using it, they come back over and over again, which again is very important. We want to be able to scale it up and want to be able to use it long term. And this is um, just a little bit about a very small scale um, student feedback experience that we had. So when we first started OER, probably two years out, we did a pre and post assessment of three research courses that used OER um, and had very positive reviews of the texts. So we um, surveyed the students from the three classes and the faculty. Um, the students noted that the text was free and easy to access, which they really appreciated. Um, obviously, anywhere they had um, internet access, so they could get to the textbook. The faculty really liked the textbook. They liked that it was um, very comparable to the expensive text that had been used previously. Um, and also because it is a research course um, and technology changes so much, it was very easy for them to update this um, OER as opposed to a traditional text. And so that was a new experience for them. And also, um, though these three specific instructors didn't do it, you could also, um, doing a research course, um, tailor some of the information to specifically the databases and um, other resources that are used on your campus. Um, so they were very excited about that as a future possibility. Um, but mainly this small kind of test run assessment was uh, something that unexpectedly brought us some real insight in that we realized that the faculty members, when we spoke to them about this, were actually concerned about assessing OER in their courses because they were worried that the assessment would be more a reflection of their teaching 
um, than the course material. Um, so that was definitely a surprise to us, but something that was great to learn early on. Um, so we can keep that in mind uh, for our future assessments. Um, and then future resource, uh, resource, future research. This is uh, what we're looking to do um, in the near future. Um, we know that we need to keep um, an uh, analysis going of student persistence and retention, um, especially because with everything going on right now, that kind of data um, can really get us institutional support. Um, I think most people going through very hard um, times at their colleges with enrollment and budget. And we need the actual data to back up what we know is to be true, um, which is that when students save money using OER, they are much more likely to take that money that they have saved and invest it into um, adding another course to their schedule, um, enrolling in additional courses maybe over the um, subsequent semester. Um, so in the long run, this is something that would prove very powerful to our administration, but we know we need the data. We can't just say that to them. We have to back it up. We have to be able to prove that this is something um, that's going to happen if we continue to use OER. I think very important to note is that everyone is finding that student grades within courses are not really changing overall with the OER material. There's no measurable difference. We found that as well between 2017 and 2019. That's not the goal of OER. The goal is equitable access to course material and to student learning. We wanna be able to buy that on a sustainable, long-term scalable project. We're not here to transform education as far as student grades. We're here to transform education as far as student equity and having access to course material. And again, looking at our scalability, between when we started this in fall 2017, we had seven faculty. By last spring, we had 136 faculty. And I think that was a tremendous amount in four years to be able to do that. And part of the reason why we were able to scale up so quickly is having our advisory board and taking a look at the courses that we could switch over to OER. Instead of looking that single-minded where you're looking at one faculty for one course, on a one-off, we're looking to scale it where a faculty will turn all of their courses to OER. And also taking a look at taking um, an entire course and switching it up to OER. And that's where we're headed towards now. So this, I will try to um, go through as quickly as I can. Um, essentially, one of the big issues that we had on our campus, and then I knew through um, various OER groups that we're involved with is that other campuses had the issue too. When uh, a lot of faculty members were confused about what constitute an OER. And also some of that confusion um, is because different campuses um, might consider something as an OER course differently. Um, so for example, um, on our campus, it's 51% of a course has to be OER material in order for it to be considered an OER. Um, not everyone has that um, as their requirement, so that um, definitely adds to the confusion. But um, to sum up, uh, we wanted to create a tool to help our faculty, also knowing it would help um, people on other campuses with their own faculty, um, to do a really quick assessment and say whether or not they were using OER so that they wouldn't misreport data to us. And while they were doing this, we didn't want it to be a static form. We wanted it to be something where they were understanding um, why we were asking these questions and how their answers were shaping whether or not they were using OER. So very quickly, um, if we click here, we have to do some of the required stuff, which would be you know, your name, um, and we're just gonna go through this and that email, which for us has to be right and at NCC. Um, and if you adapt this, which you're welcome to do, you can see the Creative Commons um, underneath. You can make those changes so that uh, you can change all this so that it's unique to your 
campus. Um, so very quickly, this is one of the questions. So we're asking if the any of the materials you're using have a Creative Commons license. And then depending on your answer, the um, feedback changes. So if you click yes, um, you see the little yay. If the materials fall into this category, it's probably considered OER. Um, free and legally distributed, and then please continue to the next question. If you had selected no, um, and it would say, uh-oh, uh, and it explains if the materials do not fall into this category, it might not be an OER. Um, just remember, just because something's free doesn't mean it's OER. That's something we have to remind our faculty over and over. Um, and then, of course, we have a generic OER account um, that we both have access to. And that's a great thing I would highly recommend at your own campus. So it's not under one person's name and the emails don't get lost. Um, and so we always throw that out too, because obviously these are kind of general questions. Um, but I think we're, you know, we're really kind of at the 10 minute mark, but these are the types of questions that are on here and the feedback um, for each question. This is a good um, example of the kind of feedback. Um, the link is here in the slides. This is under Creative Commons. We initially did this in SpringShare um, and it is embedded in a LibGuide, but everyone is welcome to take this and adapt it for their own purposes. Um, SpringShare was the best option for us because it's something we already had on our campus, but I know some other campuses have taken the information and moved it into something like uh, Google. Um, or you might even try to put it in something like, uh, you know, Blackboard or um, something similar that you're using. You have lots of options. Um, and should you have questions about this, you can um, specifically the, this tool, you can send me an email, um, anything about anything else in our presentation, please feel free to email either one of us um, and we'd be happy to talk to you about it. Thank you.